Yeah, I mean, strong is an, an understatement, I would say. We're, we're seeing earnings right now. We have 85% of companies have beat their expectations. And they're not just beating it by a little bit. I mean, we're seeing over 20% um, above expectations that companies are beating their averages by. And just to put that in perspective, if you looked at the first quarter, averages were above expectations, but only by about 3%. So analysts really came in a lot more negative with everything going on right now, but everything is picking up so much quicker than they had anticipated. And I really see that as a positive sign as we look forward here. What advice are you kind of giving clients here in terms of bracing for that uncertainty ahead? Is it still the, the best case to be hiding out in tech names or where do you put mm -hmm. your money to work? You look at well, the S&P 500 is doing really well for the year. If you were just to equal weight all of the companies in the S&P 500, it's actually still down about 8% right now for the year which means a lot of companies are actually still well off their hides and still have a lot of room to grow. So I'm not getting out of these tech names right now, but there's definitely a lot of places that still have good value that you can be averaging your money in here. And I still think there's a lot of upside potential as we look forward. Yeah, let's talk about more of that because we kind of saw that happen before big tech started to report their earnings. Maybe before we saw that big antitrust hearing kick off, we did see kind of mm -hmm. the start of a mini rotation out of tech into cyclicals. So when you look at the opportunities in some of those names, which ones are you seeing right now that might be uh, ones worth taking a look at? Yeah, I really like, so I, I add to broad markets rather than just individual names here. And I'm really looking at your value sector. So whether it's actually your small companies in the US are well more off their highs than all those big brand names. So I'm looking at your small and your mid-sized companies that are your dividend payers, like Vanguard or Charles Schwab is really good options there that you can own an entire index um, of all those value companies. That's really where we're looking to add right now. And that, that's what we're focusing on for our clients because the great thing is they're paying great dividends and you're getting nothing sitting in cash anymore. I mean, all of our checking and savings accounts basically just went down to zero. So there's a not, not a lot of good alternative, but you're getting good dividends on these things. They're still well off their highs. I much prefer the index though over any individual companies right now. Yeah, and when you talk about too, I guess just backing up and, and kind of charting where all this happened, of course, we've come a long way since March if you're thinking about the S&P being positive. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know whether or not you put more weight on the fact that the Fed's been out there trying to do everything they can to keep the market afloat. Or if it's more of the three trillion dollars, we we saw two trillion dollars come through in the in the CARES Act, and what we might see come mm -hmm. through. I mean, how important is this next week or two, depending on what Republicans and Democrats can get forward? As we hear from Jerome Powell, kind of backing off and saying, "Look, the the fiscal side needs to do its part here as well." Yeah, and, and they have come in and done their part. But what's also really interesting to see is people have saved a lot more amount of money than they've been spending. So a lot there's a really increase in savings right now, which can boost consumption as we go forward. Um, the Fed has continued to step in. I really wouldn't be surprised if we continue to see that. But people are saving more right now. And on top of that, we have record levels of money sitting in cash because so many people got nervous in March and sold out of their investments. There's over $5 trillion just sitting in money markets and checking and savings accounts. And what's happening is people are realizing there's not a lot of good alternative. You can't just sit in cash forever. There's this fear of missing out as they're seeing how well the economy and the stock markets have continued to bounce back here. And so yeah. any future dips, we're seeing a lot of buying potential coming in. And that might mean those dips are a lot less severe, kind of regardless of what the Fed does or not. I'd push back one one point two here that we've we've raised with a few other guests here that are also raising kind of the same points. When we think about the underlying mm -hmm. economy and consumer spending right now, a lot of debate going on as we get new studies out there looking at whether or not it was more beneficial to shut down economies completely or whether or not it's just consumers don't actually want to leave their house and spend. We did see on Sunday, the TSA traveler data came uh, within about 140 travelers of topping 800,000 passengers for the first time since the pandemic hit, but still travel not anywhere near the more than 2 million passengers that we'd see a day before back in 2019. So, I mean, what does that maybe say about opportunities and some of these uh, names tied to travel and whether or not you're optimistic that that recovery might persist. Yeah, I mean, I think long term, these things are going to recover. Maybe we're not travel, we're not flying right now, but we are driving. I mean, things are starting to pick up. And when you're looking maybe a year, two years, three years down the line, those things are going to pick up. And so it's a really good buying opportunity right now. But spending very well may shift. I mean, it might not be the big travel industries or big cruise industries that were booming quite before this. But it really goes back to why, as an investor, you need to make sure you have a well diversified portfolio. Because these things are going to happen and certain industries are not going to bounce back the way others are actually benefiting from this. So making sure you own all of those different names is that much more important right now more than ever.